Telstra keep sending me a message to remind me that my $10 monthly internet credits will end. And it's like, I didn't know I was getting $10 credit. I've been with Telstra for- On your home internet? Yeah. I've been with Telstra for maybe 15 years. Like since And you're getting there, and for your 15 years, they're giving you $10. I don't know if they've given me 10 for 15 years or like three months because the internet went out for like a couple of hours or something. That'd be a good marketing technique, just to text someone like, uh, hey, I hope you really enjoyed the $9,000 of credit we gave you in December. <laughs> <laughs> or just like a good way to raise prices is just say like the $10 credit we've been giving you is uh, running out in a couple of months. So that's probably what they're doing to you, actually. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, that's not what this episode is about. That was just the message I received literally two minutes ago. Yeah. We're talking about more important things. Like the future of devices. <laughs> James, what is the future of device? If I could articulate what the future of devices is, it's a little sort of coin-sized. Yeah. Exactly coin size, actually. Like Which a, coin? Like a small- $2 f- or 50 cents? There's uh, a tw- 20 cents. Vast difference. 20 cents. 20. If you, you wouldn't want a 50 cent for our American listeners. 50 cents is huge. The, 50 cent, the Australian 50 cent coin is enormous. It's an enormous- They don't have 50 cents over there. There'll be two quarters to them. But it's basically the size of two quarters. It really Probably is. A, it's a gigan- Probably four quarters. It's a gigantic octagon. Is it an octagon? No, no it's, it's got more than eight. I reckon it's got like 12 sides. Deca- decagon? Maybe we should ask, what's your perplexity AI you made me download? Let's yep. try perplexity AI. How many sides does an Australian 50 cent piece have? Answer. 12 sides. 12 sides. Nailed it. So it's a, it's a giant 12 side coin. So I wouldn't want a device that that's big. I would want one that's like probably a 20 cent coin. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to interact with it. It sort of just runs my life for me. But it has a little projector on it and you can play movies on the wall. Yeah. So it could project like a 4K screen. 4K, yeah. On, yeah. The, on the wall of any room you're currently in. Or hand. Or hand. You can project it onto your hand. But then the rest of your life, it sort of runs without any interference. So I don't, I don't even want to be able to interact with it. No? So, you know, not, I don't want to be able to tell it. Like, I actually agree with that. I'm not, I don't want to say to it, like, oh, can you set a timer for 20 minutes? I know. Or, I, I want to want for nothing. I, I want the absence of desire. <laughs> I want desire obliterated from my life. So, like, presumably... This is what this, the Buddhists were talking about, I assume. I haven't read any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there are sort of, like, two columns to this strategy. Mm-hmm. On the one hand, I'm getting, like, pumped full of a Zempic. Yep. So I no longer desire food or any sort of sustenance. Yeah. My body no longer needs any of that. Yeah. On the other side, my device is sort of just like running my life elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's booking my appointments and then sending like an AI agent to go to those appointments. Yeah, yeah. It's buying the stuff that it knows that I probably like, like yeah. grocery, like getting me new toothpaste, whatever. Yeah, yeah. No interaction from me. I don't even, to be frank, I don't really know what the device itself is doing apart from being a movie projector. <laughs> But that's kind of like the vibe that I'm pursuing. Well, I guess the device needs to know what temperature. Oh, it, why does it need to know what temperature it is? Oh, you just get it from the bomb. Yeah. Although they've bloody got it wrong on this El Nino stuff. This is an, <laughs> we're so far off track. But so Apple apparently doesn't use the bomb as its like weather source or whatever. Bureau of Meteorology. Yep. Yeah, the Bureau, the official government thing. Because like apparently m- many governments in the world charge exorbitant rates to access their APIs or whatever and access yeah, it's their the data. It's the great unspoken scandal of, um, you know, people are complaining about Reddit APIs, <laughs> but these government meteorology departments have got the tech companies over a barrel charging yeah. absurd rates. For hence, their... hence why Apple uses Yahoo. And people complain, but I like it. You know, people are like, oh, what weather app are you using? I'm like, I just use the inbuilt Apple weather one. Yes, I know, that's normie or whatever. I like it. It's overly optimistic. And I think that's a good way to be, be about <laughs> to be, the weather. Yeah, it, it'll be like it's sunny. It's a, it typically says that it's not going to rain that much. And if it is going to rain, there's a low chance that it's going to rain. Yep. If it genuinely reckons like there's a 60 to 80% chance it's going to rain, you know it's going to rain. If it says there's no chance of rain, it might rain. But like, let's hope it doesn't. I think that's a great way to, to live your life. So I like it. Apple weather, it's great. It's optimistic. I mean, I'm like, yes, we're playing golf. My phone says that there's a 10% chance that we're going to get one mil. That's nothing. That's almost literally nothing. What about the rain parrot? Are you a rain parrot guy? I do have rain parrot. I do send, rain send par- you push notifications when it's going to rain? Yeah, but it, it, I feel like it's a lagging indicator, which is not 
what the app promises to be. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, the rain parrot allegedly sends you a push notification every time the rain is about to hit your location. Yeah, but but my experiences have never been that positive with it. And like, especially if that's what it promises to the minute. Also, like, all my notifications are freaking silence. So I back before I was in do not disturb mode a hundred percent of the time. You know, it says rain parrot and has a kind of a, quite a funny noise that it sends with a push notification. You know, the apps, this is the perfect segue. Apps are shit now. They've been in shitified in that the experience of all these different apps and having to have a million different apps means that you, we've just ended up silencing our phones because they all abuse notifications and blah, blah, sure. blah, blah. And sure, you could go through. I know I can go through and put it in a certain mode, like RAF mode or whatever, you know, do not disturb mode or whatever, but allow push notifications from Rain Parrot. So I know it's going to rain in five minutes if Rain Parrot were to actually be able to tell me it rains in five minutes as opposed to when it starts sprinkling yep. a few minutes later, it tells me that it's about to rain. Um, but point being, the way that we use apps right now is broken. It made us change our behavior. Only boomers have their phone not on silent. Have it, like when was the last time you heard a ringtone? Yeah, you don't hear ringtones anymore. That's you, you only hear them in the context of, yeah, a boomer will get it and they'll have their phone set to like the oh, beep, beep, yeah. beep, beep, like oh. the, that horrible alarm sound. Yeah, or I play golf with, it, with Pikey, Jim Pike, who is 70 years old occasionally, and he's got Sweet Child of Mine as his, <laughs> as his SMS tone. <laughs> So, like, it plays prolonged? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, um, for whatever reason, it came up, like, favourite songs. And I was like, I know what Pikey's favourite song is. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I said, Sweet Child of Mine. And he's like, nah, call my phone. I was like, I don't have your number. But when I called, it was a different ringtone. It was like Kesha or something. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> What's Sweet Child of Mine? He's like, that's my SMS time. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, actually, I do wonder what how much revenue Apple lost when they opened up ringtones on the iPhone? Because you know how the the ringtone section used to be different from the song yeah. purchasing stuff on iTunes? Yeah, you could pay a dollar whatever for yeah, a yeah. ringtone. Yeah, yeah, in iTunes, and yeah. They, yeah. You know, the day they let anyone make a ringtone and upload it to their phone, what, are they, what, what they lost. Anyway, this is I, not... I don't know if he has Apple. He might have Android. But point being, apps are broken, and there's a new paradigm. De- new paradigm alert. That is... I'm using this as the segue into Rabbit AI. Yeah. So we've done a couple of episodes about AI devices. Mm-hmm. Obviously, AI is the is the, the hip new thing in the world of technology. Everyone's talking about AI. Yeah. But one of the... AI, artificial intelligence. Artificial <laughs> intelligence. A computer that knows things and can Good articulate chess. them. So we've done a couple of things about that. Uh, humane. We did an episode talking about the humane stuff a while ago, which is like that pin you wear on your lapel that has voice control. Mm. The idea being, and this feeds into meta glasses, meta glasses, because you know we've also talked about in the context of like what comes next from the smartphone. Yeah, the smartphone is pretty well advanced. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not seeing incredible advancement in the world of smartphones now. Mm. Well, the form factor hasn't changed in it's, twenty years. It's pretty well been solved. Right? Yeah. Like you got a rectangle of black glass that can show you content, can show you movies, can show you articles. Yeah, and has can, a big bad camera on it. It's got, and the camera gets bigger and nastier every year. Because that's yeah. really the only thing that you can say to the average person, your phone is better now because it can take slightly better photographs. Yeah. Because the average person doesn't really give a crap about... Um, Anything else, pretty much. Like even the chip performance. They know when their and phone gets... And battery life, honestly. Battery life, they notice when their phone gets slower after yeah. it's a few updates behind or, or whatever. Mm. And they notice when the photos get better, but they don't really notice anything else. But that's the only real area where smartphone innovation is kind of happening, mm. apart from some, like, gimmicks. You know, like Samsung coming out with a foldable phone or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's that kind of stuff is obviously happening. But even that, it's not really blowing the roof off. Mm. So AI devices and the idea that you can take something like ChatGPT and put it into a, a new form factor that actually makes people's lives better and is maybe more efficient than using your phone. And it's kind of hard. Yeah. You know, we talked about Humane, which is, as I said, that lapel pin that you can talk to. And based on that announcement they did, most people kind of like ridiculed it. Yeah. It could project... Well, I, I, I wouldn't say we ridiculed it, but I think we both came down on the side of like, I don't really see the point in this device. No. And compare that with the launch of the iPhone. It had been insanely anticipated. Mm. Everyone saw that announcement and were like, incredible. I, I, w- I will say, like, 
the difference there was the iPhone was a phone replace. Like we had, we all had mobile phones. Yeah, yeah. Then and this was just like a better mobile phone. A, a huge iteration on that that also brought together the stuff we were doing on our computer. But that's that's kind of the point, right? Well, like, I guess the humane are claiming to be the next mobile phone. I guess so. I, I should probably take that back. Yeah, like yeah. They were basically like, "This is a phone replacement." This is a phone replacement. But everyone that saw it was like. Ain't no way I'm replacing. I'm my not phone replacing my phone with that, right? Like <laughs> with straight a brooch. Up. Anyway, um, we're talking about a new approach that's kind of come out of the woodwork about this at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, which is one of the big trade shows that sort of shows everything that's coming up in the world of consumer technology. Um, everything was AI. Mm. Every single company that was showing a new device or new product was pitching it to the audience and like retailers and whoever else goes to CES through the lens of, oh, this somehow involves AI, yeah, even yeah. if it didn't really. Yeah, yeah. And that ranged from all different sorts of stuff, like Mercedes announced its new sort of in-car assistant or whatever, which was like now powered by large language models, yeah. or like all sorts of other just like random crap you can buy for your house that was quote-unquote AI. Yeah, yeah. Um, ovens and sh- what, yeah like ovens with AI, AI integration and shit like that and it's like if it's, if it's evidence of one thing it's that every single company on earth is like we need to get in on this well this. At Callaway the golf company released their new driver golf driver we're talking about a golf driver and it's called the Paradigm which Cal- Callaway used last year they released the Paradigm last year this is the Paradigm Smoke AI and it has AI like printed on this golf driver the because- Paradigm Smoke AI yeah that's that rips as a name of a product. <laughs> and paradigm spelt incorrectly, like D Y, like, pa- like. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, and like because they used AI to develop the face. And it's like, I, I assume that every piece of software that's been developing golf faces for the last 10 years is like at least use some form of like you put in a lot of data. Like and machine learning or inference or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But the fact that AI is printed on a $1,000 golf driver <laughs> this year, it's like, what? Like, yeah, what? yeah. When I told you that, you said, like, I, you assumed it would have, like, some kind of chip in it that, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, it's some sort of, like, Bluetooth connection to your phone that tracks, like, the speed of your drive or something, which would be cool, I assume. Yeah, but, if no. you If you can make, no. It's, it's just, just a golf driver. It's the Paradigm Smoke AI <laughs> golf driver, which, exactly, yeah, okay, cool. Because it used data. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. that, but that, that's, like, the level of this sort of stuff. But, anyway, one of the big devices that came out of CES – and has been hyped and I would say has gotten like a more positive reception generally than the humane pin. Uh, the Rabbit AI is mm. the one that everyone's hyping right now. It's not pitching itself as a replacement for your iPhone. It's pitching it as like an accompaniment to your current. It's a new de- thing. It's a new device, a new piece of shit to carry around. <laughs> well, I mean, you're negative about it. I'm not, no. I think it's cool. <laughs> well, I do, before we proceed, we should we should let you know that Raf has pre-ordered this device. I have, yes, <laughs> but that's because one important point about it is the price point, which is like Australian dollars. It's like three hundred bucks, three thirty, I think. Yeah, that's within my impulse purchase window. Yeah, I don't know what the upper limit of my impulse purchase. There's a is. many. There are many things on this earth that Raf would impulse purchase for three hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything like sub three fifty might be my impulse purchase. <laughs> Like that's my that's, that's my your cap. ceiling. That's, that's my it. ceiling. Oh, there's a lot of things that fall under that range. <laughs> yeah, but the humane pin is obviously above that substantially. Yeah, yeah. And so did not fall into my um into your range. Anyway, what t- tell us what the rabbit AI allegedly does? <laughs> so a it's it's designed by Teenage Engineering, which are like they make cool stuff. If you've seen their stuff before. It looks great. Yeah, t- so Teenage Engineering, in case you haven't heard of them, they, are, they have a bit of buzz in the tech world at the moment. They build their own products, but they also consult and do design for other companies. All their stuff is kind of like classic mid-century consumer product design. Yeah. Like it's like data rams, like German style uh, industrial design from like the 60s yeah. and 70s. Exactly. Modernist, minimal. I mean, you know, they released a handheld gaming console with a like a ratchet. Like a, yeah, yeah. Side, a, if you think about stuff that's kind of like brushed steel and it's like, you know, big chunky knobs, like tactile, feels heavy in the hand. They sell like on on their website, a lot of their stuff is a lot more expensive than this, but they sell stuff like a voice recorder that costs like $1,500, but looks like, like a hefty piece of kit with big chunky buttons and things like that, rather than other voice recorders, which are a bit more 
slim and modern and plastic. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the vibe they put out. And when companies say they've partnered with teenage engineering, people it, like me just impulse purchase. Yeah, people, people, you just like hit that Apple Pay button or yeah, whatever. Well, I hit the Apple Pay button because <laughs> you know it, it, it suggests that it's like, oh, these, they, you know, this they're not just going to whack a crappy little touch. It's going to be delightful. They're going to have a button. They're going to have a big nasty button to press, <laughs> which they do. Well, this has got like a scroll wheel. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. scroll wheel. And it is an AI first device that you go onto a portal on your computer on a website and log into things like Spotify and Uber and whatnot. Um, and then you press the button, you pull the device out of your pocket, press the button on the side and talk to it. And you can ask it simple things like what you'd ask ChatGPT. And it's much faster, supposedly, than ChatGPT at searching the internet for answers and like coming up with answers, uh, even though it does everything off device, it's all kind of cloud-based. And also you can do things like, and it makes a big point of this, book me an Uber uh, for 8 a.m. for six people. And it will just do that for you because you've logged into your Uber account. Um, you know, play me uh, play me a, a song about computers and it'll play you a song on Spotify as long as you logged into Spotify on the portal. Tell me about this song that's playing, who wrote it, blah, blah, blah. So it's like an AI device. It's another one of these AI devices. It's got a camera on it, this, that, and the other, but it's not claiming to be a phone replacement, very specifically. As you said, it's another device. It's cheap, which I like. And as I said earlier, apps are dog shit. I, I see the vision. I see the vision. Of yeah, this yeah. I see, I, I see the vision as well in the sense that it's like it calls the AI system that powers it like a large action model instead of a large language model. Yeah. And it claims that it's trained on, you know, a bunch of people using Spotify religiously to do all sorts of yeah, different yeah. things. Yeah, I should, I should mention that's another thing that you can do. If it doesn't know an app, you can open up a, a web portal navigate that website with it recording your screen and then it'll learn how to navigate that website. To learn how to do a specific thing. So if you say, open up, I don't know, whatever, and do this particular thing, it will have learned how to do it based on how you use it. Yeah, it it uses the example of opening mid-journey in Discord. And like if once you log into Discord, open it up and type a prompt and generate a photo and then save a photo, it knows then you can just ask it, generate this photo in mid journey and it'll, it'll do it is the idea. So you're no longer, if I, if you want to generate a photo, you're no longer opening it, your phone, opening discord in this case, but like opening an app, typing in a prompt, waiting for the prompt to come out and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, That's yeah. the idea. That's what it does. Um, and yeah, as you say, I think it is kind of smart in the sense that I think they understand that people are not going to give up their smartphones. Mm. Like there's no one is going to replace their phone where they like read stuff consume content do all sorts of different things with like a pin that you wear on your lapel that you can talk to yeah and like i think you were saying this before it's like they were so obsessed with the idea of transcending the screen that they put in like that little projector that yeah this goes, is humane yeah it's like yeah this is other people have said this but yeah it's they lean so heavily into like getting off the screen like we need to remove people, people hate screens like we need to get it get in a nation Get out into nature. Touch grass. People love screens. People, they want to touch glass. They want to touch glass. And there's one thing with this. Like, yeah, humane is just like, well, we sometimes do need to represent things using text or images. And people do need to sometimes interact without their voice. So we'll come up with this convoluted system where we project like text and images on someone's hand and then like track their gestures and whatever. And what Rabbit did was like, oh, no, we just put a screen on. Yeah, we, so you we, can, we just have a screen. So you can see the stuff happen before it actions it. Yeah. I think is the idea. But like, you can no. take the photo like using the screen. So I kind of get like their strategy is more like instead of we're not going to replace your phone, we just want to at least for now. I think the, probably the long term vision is that they will want to replace the phone. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably the way they're thinking. But the sort short term strategy is we're just going to replace the annoying stuff that is multi step and takes you a while to do on your phone yeah. or is like mildly annoying. Yeah, I will say like they make bolt. One of the things in the demo that they talk about is like planning it. The, the classic plan a trip to Europe and like book all the flights and the accommodation. It's like no one is <laughs> doing that with their voice. And yes, you have to confirm like it, another thing, a good thing about a screen is with the Uber, it shows on the screen like Uber XL, 8 a.m., your name, like confirm, and then you hit confirm to pay. And even apparently with the, even with their example of like the Europe trip or whatever, where they're like, we want, you know, 
make an itinerary and book every museum and book all of our accommodation across Europe for a month or whatever. Like, yeah, absolutely no one in the <laughs> yeah, world no, is doing that with their com- voice. It's completely uh, demented to be like, oh, can you book me a flight to Paris from Sydney uh, that only has one stopover? Yeah. And then while I'm in Paris, I want to see the Louvre and I want to see uh, the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I wanna, yeah. I wanna and book a- me a car and it's got to be a four-wheel drive. Yeah, you've got to put me a, like, a, a nice roomy four-wheel drive. And it'd be good to see the south of France as well. So just yeah, book us train tickets book and accommodation and everything. And then it, it, you know, on this on this little screen on the rabbit, <laughs> it shows you this itinerary. And you go do it. <laughs> That's a product for like ten of the most insane people on the planet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like I really want to go on a month long trip to Europe, but I want to do no work. <laughs> I just want it to happen. Like book a Kentucky tour. You yeah. know, <laughs> you're, what you're really targeting at that point is someone who has an insane amount of money. So there's a market for that, but also doesn't value their time at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got a month, but not like an hour. It's so the, part of the joy of traveling is like a little bit of it is like planning it, right? It's like, what am I going to do in Europe? No, no, <laughs> I gotta, no, no. Let the AI determine this it for me. This $300 device with like a cartoon rabbit on it. <laughs> I'm going to let them plan an entire three-week trip. Yeah, 20 so, grand, just bang. So yeah, that stuff in the announcement was obviously kind of stupid. No, but, but you get the idea that like, What they're trying to say is the way that we interact with all these various apps and whatnot now could be better. I did like one part of the announcement at the very beginning. He parodied in in the negative the um, original iPhone, like there's an app for that. Uh, If you want to do this, there's an app for that. If you want to do this, there's an app for that. The point that Jesse Liu, the CEO of Rabbit makes, um, as he says in the negative, like there's an app for this, there's an app for this, there's an app for this. And as we know now, because we all have hundreds of apps on our phone, it's actually annoying trying to find the right app for something. Like what's what's the app for my friggin' lamps that I need to like turn the lamps on and off because it's different to my friggin' fan and it's different for booking this and booking that. The idea being that if you had basically an LLM or an AI that just finds the app for you and deals with the app, I do see in the future... AI kind of serving that role probably via APIs and whatnot. And, you know, um, companies like Uber, rather than having their own app and being an interface themselves, just having an exposed API. If you were to build a company, it is kind of like what we were saying for news the other day. Like there will be companies like the AP that are basically just like an API for news that just plug into LLMs and take royalties from LLMs and AI accessing them, you build companies that are just AIs. Like your consumer products like Uber will be more of just like an exposed API to an AI that will allow you to, you know, book friggin' yeah, transport. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's at least directionally right in the sense that it's like even Apple knows that most people don't use the same app interface that they used 10 years ago in the sense that like most people don't even look at their home screen anymore. Mm. They just search for apps They've created that weird screen over the far right with like folders of, yeah. like, that it automatically sorts your apps into different folders. Yeah, and there was a moment in the world of the iPhone app store where people would browse the app store to find yeah. cool new stuff to do on their phone. That's kind of gone away. No, when was the last time you looked at the app store? To, like, yeah. find there used something? to be a major thing. Being featured in the app store was like a major thing when now yeah. it's just like. like I would, I'd be fascinated to know what like the traffic trends are for people who are actually reading the content on the app store. Yeah. You know, they've got like curated stuff. Yeah, Who's yeah. doing that? Uh, I want fewer apps. I more. think it's pretty well established that whatever the next thing is will be an AI powered layer where you don't have to be, like download the Uber app. You know, you know, if there's a perfect world in the future where you just have a device that's AI enabled or whatever, and you don't even have to download Uber, you just yeah. got to say, Book me an Uber. So at the moment, we're in this kind of like weird gold rush where all these companies are trying to build the AI device mm. or the AI platform that will be what the iPhone was. And I think crucially, people are trying to figure out not just like what is the AI device that Raf Dixon will pre-order when he sees, because mm. he's like, oh, it's teenage engineering. <laughs> they make beautiful devices. Fair but like, uh, it's below my line. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that's bad. But, you know, at the end of the day, someone like Rabbit – wants to build something that like your mum will use or like a random person who doesn't care about this stuff will buy because they're like that will make my life better um well i have to have one everyone has one and and i don't think the current iteration of this device is oh absolutely targeted that person but it's very clearly like they would like to have those people on board Mm. where they're like oh great it's a device where i can just ask it to book me an uber 
or I can ask it to book me, you know, a full European holiday. Again, don't think people are doing that. But the idea being that, like, it helps me more seamlessly interact with all the stuff that I use every single day. Yeah. You know, book me a calendar appointment for this day with this person um, or find a time that Raf and I can have a meeting. Yeah. You know, at the moment, none of the platforms really do that particularly well. No. But if you had, like, a little device that did that and had a little screen where it confirms yeah. and goes, hey, 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, you can both chat. Yeah. That's, that's something hey, the average person would be would be interested. It's better. Uh, for sure. And one of the reasons, as I said, I don't see myself just being, like, a rabbit power user, let's be honest. Like, I bought it as a, a curiosity. The company that is best placed, well, the two companies, I suppose, but in the case of the two gentlemen sitting at this table, James and Raf, this best place, at least for us, to actually fill that gap is Apple, of course. Like, it's not having a second device. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the other point that I would make is, is like, this gold rush to develop a, a device. And people have kind of asked the question, which is, like, why isn't this just an app that I can get on my existing iPhone and open up and it does all this? Because it's basically a software layer that just has like a kind of cool walkie-talkie device interface, that's yeah. sort of attached to it. The founder has popped up on Twitter basically saying, oh, you know, it's a moat. We want to have the device so people are kind of locked into using it. Yeah, but I also, like we have ChatGPT that can do a, I mean, it can't access APIs and blah, blah, blah. I can't. And you can't log into all your different accounts via ChatGPT. But it's like, why wouldn't they just introduce that as a feature and their own little agents or whatever? But and they probably this, will. And they, and they probably will, exactly. But I've said this before, like, it's still annoying to pull your phone out of your pocket, unlock it, f- search the chat, C-H-A, like, chat G- open the ChatGPT app, click on the right thing in the ChatGPT app, hit the microphone button, then start talking, as opposed to... I mean, in an ideal world, what I'd probably do is press the button on my watch, like my Apple Watch or whatever, and talk to Siri and get I'd be like, yeah. do it. And that's the idea, I guess, behind... Book, book me an Uber that takes me home. Exactly. And you see like a visual confirmation of what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And you can see that sort of being the future. And that's the idea, I think, behind Rabbit. As it, like, again, realistically, am I going to carry a phone in one pocket and this Rabbit thing in the other pocket? Unlikely. It'll probably be in my backpack, maybe, in my bag. Or like sitting around the house. Let's be honest; it'll be sitting around the house, and it'll be in the it'll be in the cable drawer. Yeah, but the idea though of pulling out a device, pressing the button on the side, and talking to it, and it actually doing like booking me an Uber, like that is way more convenient than going through the rigmarole and even asking questions. Which is also why it's just like obviously Siri should be doing this. Like yeah. it's, it's so obvious, and Google is the other. Like obviously Google with. Android phones and Google Pixels or whatever should just be doing this right now. Yeah, you know, like and, that, and that's the big, like, risk. And maybe this is part of their top-line strategy where it's like we would love to just be acquired by Apple or Google or whatever mm-hmm. or Microsoft or, or whatever, whatever, or even OpenAI, you know. Like, I can see a pitch where they're kind of like, hey, w- while you guys are trying to think about what your hardware future might look like, yeah. we've actually built it, so just buy us and we'll, yeah. and we'll, and we'll be the, the, the OpenAI front end. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the interesting thing from the Apple side is like this whole thing operates via web apps in that you log into Spotify via a browser, you log into Uber via the browser, you log into all your different services via the browser, you show it how to use the services it doesn't know about via a browser. But Apple can't do it that way. Apple would have to do it via their own like app ecosystem and app store so that they can take 30% of so they can take their margin on anything that's kind of purchased via these things or like the Spotify subscription and blah, 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 blah. So, but, but you can see that happening because one of the big issues is obviously like privacy, right? This can't be an app on an iPhone that uses your, your other apps. I, know, I keep saying freaking app, app, app. But you know what I mean? Because Apple doesn't allow Uber to see what's happening in Facebook and vice versa. Like it doesn't allow apps to send data between each other, blah, 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 blah. But Apple creating an API layer that acts as an intermediary and payments and blah, 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 that allows other apps to kind of plug into it and plug into Siri, I guess I'm talking about, like a a much more advanced Siri 2, does seem to kind of make sense to me where it's like, if I'm Uber, I need to just make sure I can conference with Apple's Siri 2 layer and that way I can get kind of payments from it, but I know that Apple's going to take their cut, et cetera, et cetera. That's basically what I see the future as, like Apple introducing basically all of this functionality, but... As an app maker, you plug into it. Yeah. If at the moment it's very clear that Apple is working on some sort of AI 
shake up that they're doing. There's been lots of reporting from the, the information and others that they're working on this stuff. They know that Siri sucks and has sucked for a very long time. They're developing their own LLMs. They want stuff that can run natively on a phone. So it's pretty clear that this sort of thing where you could say to Siri exactly what we just talked about currently saying to this rabbit device that's being launched in a couple of months, book me an Uber to here, do this, book me an appointment with RAF at a time that works both best for both of us. But something that's like a powerful personal assistant rather than yeah. just being book like... Book me a doctor's appointment at my tech, doctor. Ex- yeah, exactly. Like I, I need an appointment at my doctor at such, such and such time. And then it comes back to you and says, hey, here are three times that I yeah. found. Because we've shown it how to use hot doc. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's through an official hot doc API. In a way, you could think about this rabbit thing of being like, we have to be scrappy about this. If Apple launched a platform that was kind of like this, they could then say to every app developer in the world, these are our, like, our APIs for interacting yeah. with our LLM. You have to follow these rules, but... Once it gets approved through this laborious app store process, Mm -hmm. you can all have access to this incredible new system we have. Whereas Rabbit has been, we don't have the resources or infrastructure to make that happen. Let's build a thing that can learn from just doing so that you can say, book me an appointment at this doctor I go to in Surrey Hills and it will just do it through Hot Doc without Hot Doc having to be involved yeah. in any way is like the dream scenario. But yeah, it kind of comes back to the fact that Rabbit clearly knows that Apple are going to want to develop their own version of this mm. that just comes with the phone that you already fucking have. So you yes. have to carry around two things. Google's going to want to do this. Yeah. And you can very easily see now that Google are kind of have a, a fire under their ass and have to do something, Yeah. that this is probably what they're thinking about. I mean, they're perfectly placed for this moment if they can execute in that they have the device with Google Pixel. they And Android generally. Yeah. And Android, yeah, more generally. But um, they have obviously like the interface with like the search engine interface is exactly the same interface as like most chat kind of things. They have the talent and the technology and the IP. And, and they the have research. the relationships as well. Like, yeah. Like Google have the benefit that Apple don't have in that they have a relationship with like every business on the planet. Yeah. who are already kind of like integrated into you know, Google reviews and Google Maps and all that kind of stuff. Like if you are a business that has a, a – well, if you're any business, whether you're like an e-commerce business or like a shop on a street in Sydney somewhere, yeah, yeah. you have some relationship with Google. You like have you to have – it's them called Google My Business, right? Yeah, like you, you have to have your opening hours and as well as all of the reviews and whatnot that like – Google can use but it's just like Google the question is just like can they execute yeah like like, like they have a phenomenal relationship with so many businesses to leverage yeah Yeah. which which Apple just doesn't have like because no one's going to Apple to tell Apple their opening hours and leaving Apple reviews of businesses and that kind of crap are you open on Christmas Day like no like imagine the Google workflow where you could say to your Android phone or device or whatever they've got set up what's a dry cleaning near me yeah. And then they go, okay, there are three near you. This one's open. And you say, can you just like book in a suit? Yeah. And I'll just drop it off. And they already know about you. That's- I mean, they have booking systems, right? Like yeah. it integrates with Square and blah, blah, blah. Like or you can book via Google, like hairdressing appointments and whatnot. So, yes, I mean, they are perfectly placed. They already basically have the APIs and whatnot set up for a lot of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. The question is literally just can they do it? Have they become fat, lazy, and slow? Uh, you know, under the yeah, of gold of the search engine. And then the other, the other side of it is obviously... How do they make money off it? <laughs> well, there's that. And it's also like uh, OpenAI are obviously thinking about this stuff as well. Yeah, this and is that, the whole conversation with Johnny I. And, and like, we, you know, and I'm sure OpenAI think we can do this without needing a device. Like we have... Everyone already knows what ChatGPT is. Yeah, no, nah, they, they know they need it. This is why these r- questions about Johnny Ive and whatnot are around, which was why I think that's actually a great point that like Open... OpenAI should probably buy um, Rabbit if I mean the Rabbit thing is flying like it's sold out. We should mention. Yeah, I like, think it's made, like yeah, it, it had a ten thousand. It's onto its four, fourth run or something of pre-orders, and the fourth runs are like late this year. Yeah, so I think they've clearly hit on something, and people are actually keen to buy this one. Unlike Humane, which people weren't super jazzed about mm. in the end. People, at least a certain set of people, think this is kind of interesting. But yeah, I I think it's like a. It's kind of fascinating that there's this gold rush 
to just like get something out the door. Mm. Uh, and they, I should say that Rabbit also raised $30 million in their Series A, like Kozla Ventures backed it, as well as some other investors. So like there's interest in the air. And mm. it's clear that VCs in particular are kind of like devices. People want the success of the Well, you Wi-Fi. have to have devices. That's what I was getting to. Like, yeah. I, I just think this... OpenAI will always be a slave to like they OpenAI can't have their own marketplace on an iPhone without Apple taking a thirty percent cut. Yeah, like, yeah. So like is, they're just always going to be and you know you need to press a button. That's why the only reason why this rabbit thing is compelling is that you can take it out and press the button on the side and then go, and yeah. it's quick. Like you need to be able to press one button. No unlocking this, that, and the other, and like searching for apps and all this kind of crap. One button. And immediate response. Like, that needs to be the case, which, like, Apple can do and OpenAI can't do unless they have their own device. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. But, yeah, I, I think it's interesting this is whether it's the Rabbit guys or whether it's Humane or the other, there's been other ones floating around in the either. I think there's the definitely... Pendant. The Pendant, yep. Which is, as a reminder, the one which is like a weird necklace you wear that records all your conversations mm. and like summarizes them. And of course, meta glasses. The meta glasses. Which I still think is the best form. I, actually, it's, it's the glasses with the watch as the screen. I think that that combo, like that's how we interact. Glasses and watch? Yeah, and still have your phone in your pocket so that, you know, you can play your Candy Crush or whatever your ferals do. <laughs> This is sounding very complicated, mate. You're, you're walking around with nine devices. Oh, no. A gl- glasses, a watch, and a phone. Oh, crazy. Oh, which one does what? Oh, no. Oh, I'm so lost in all of the devices. <laughs> You've lost me. Um, but anyway, I think it's interesting that everybody's kind of rushing these out the door. And I think they're rushing out the door on the proviso that they know Apple and Google are better situated than anyone to make this happen once they kind of like figure it out. Yeah. It, it's funny that all this stuff is happening. All these companies are trying to rush out an AI device at the door. Meanwhile, since the last time we talked about it, Apple has announced that the Vision Pro is coming out next month. Yeah, February 2nd or something. Yeah, so very soon the the VR goggles come out. Spatial computing, the next paradigm, allegedly. Yeah. um, Which is probably very well placed to be integrated with whatever Apple's coming up with. Yeah, yeah. But again, there's still some competing visions here. Because mm. at the end of the day, you're not going to wear your Apple Vision Pro while you're out and about. No. Maybe, maybe the Vision Pro 3 or 4 or whatever, you might have in like glasses form that you can walk around yeah, with. Yeah, maybe. But at, at the moment... It's a different thing. It's a, like they're, they're, they're kind of throwing shit at the wall. I'm a little confused by it, to be honest. I think that it is that they're throwing shit at the wall with the Vision Pro. Like the more that comes out about it. Because like spatial computing and also to me like the initial sell was... Well, A, obviously, like, consuming content, sure. Definitely sports, videos of your, like, 3D videos of your kid's fifth birthday, great, sure. But it was also, like, work and productivity. Yeah. Out of the box, it runs iPad apps. Yeah. Because obviously they want a lockdown system. Like, they're they're, they're going to want to have their own app store and whatnot. Again, people who seem to think that there's a future for OS X or Mac OS, sorry, obviously got rocks in their head. But, um, (laughs) you know, like, but... That is not like, there is no Excel, there is no Final Cut Pro, whatever. I mean, there is, sorry, there is a Final Cut Pro for iPad, and I, I assume there isn't. Is, is there a numbers for iPad? Yeah, yeah, there's a numbers. Is. They've got the whole iWork suite. I don't know if they call it <laughs> iWork anymore, but yeah. But point being, like, if, you wanna, if you're looking to make a tool that's supposed to re- replace a MacBook, this is not, well, they're going in a different direction. No, but well, it, they're, they're, they're starting from a different base, I should say. No, but it, the it, base being the iPad base. It is, it is funny. Six months to a year ago, we were talking about the metaverse is the next paradigm yeah. of computing. You know, you whack on the goggles and you are, you are there. You are with your friends in cyberspace, you know, and you're all, I don't know, you, you're all your own personalized yeah. avatar and people yeah. have to respect that. Yeah. If you show up to a meeting as Yogi Bear, that's yeah. the future, baby. Yeah, Yogi Bear, but just with like huge knockers. Yeah. <laughs> Big titty Yogi Bear. Yeah. And you're in like a weekly stand-up. Yeah, and, it, and like your you're, manager. In cri- you're in a crisis comms meeting <laughs> because you've just and had a huge data manage- breach of all employees as like AI versions of them nude have been leaked. <laughs> like it was on the internal HR server. And you're like, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're just going to hear from Raf, who I, I think is, is is Yogi Bear over there. And you're like, hey, guys. <laughs> This is this is Raf in Sydney. I uh, <laughs> want to start by acknowledging the severity of the situation. <laughs> yeah, totally. I didn't have time to change into my more serious avatar. I came from sort of like a, a birthday uh, 
morning tea, where this was more appropriate. Um, <laughs> I came from Are You OK Day. <laughs> I came from Are You OK Day. So I appreciate that I am Yogi Bear with huge knockers. <laughs> but I just want to say this data breach was really, really serious. <laughs> Anyway, so people were talking about that being the paradigm. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was except us. But like, bait them. You know, so it's funny how how quickly things and how, like, fluid things are mm. because all of a sudden... <laughs> it's, like, it's, a, it's a friggin' modernist device with a winch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden it's like, actually, no, the future is we have these incredibly intelligent agents that can just do stuff for you. Yeah, yeah. And then, But at the same time, Apple is still releasing these goggles. Mm-hmm. Which let you consume content in new and exciting ways. Well, I think so this is the thing. The more I kind of think about what the future paradigm looks like, it's like, I guess the same trend that's been happening forever, which is outsource all the boring shit to automation and just, just consume, consume content. I, th- I think that's, yeah, I mean, maybe this is how they thread the needle. They just say, the future is you sitting down with your Apple Vision Pro and you watch... Um, the Ted, equivalent of fucking TikTok. You watch Ted Lasso... <laughs> Original, please, you're watching original Apple produced content. Yeah, yeah. You're watching Ted Lasso in immersive 3D. Meanwhile, your like Apple LLM agent is out sort of running your life for you. Yeah, exactly. Bo- book- booking but your I see it more like TikTok, right? It's like you're getting just pounded with like virtual content or whatever that people are making, like short little snippets of, yeah. I don't know, chicks dancing and yeah. uh, like fail vids and <laughs> like some guy telling a cop that they actually will not accept that fine because they they're they're a sovereign entity on the land exactly this kind of thing you're kind of virtually scrolling through that and then you get an ad for a european holiday or whatever and you click oh you're like oh that would be nice like yeah i I don't want to go to europe though like i want to go to africa i want to go to south africa and you just tell your llm just book me a trip to africa if you even can, like, that's for the people who actually want to like take their goggles off. But point being, like, you're just sitting <laughs> yeah. there consuming content while your life is run yeah, by no, LLM. Your, your LLM says to you, "Excuse me, sir, uh, <laughs> Woolworths didn't have caramello koalas; they only have uh, Cadbury Dairy Milk." And you're like, Shh, "I'm watching Ted Lasso," and then it waits, and in the end, you say, "Yes, that's a fine substitution." That's the future of computing. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I mean. I bought the rabbit. <laughs> you pre-ordered the rabbit, so you're you're already on this train, no matter where it's going. Yeah, I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't know how humans create value in this circumstance, other than just by like creating more APIs. But I guess that's it. Or be, but, well, I think at the end of the day, you'd be eyeballs to consume more content. That oh, like, like this is like this is real Web three stuff. You get paid. Imagine a world where you get paid to watch content. Doesn't that sound great? You can make that real if you pre-order the rabbit today, like Raph. I'll report back when I get it in like June or July or some crap, which by then, you know, as we were joking earlier, there'll probably be like 19 different AI devices. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rabbit will be way out of date. Completely <laughs> worthless. I think you've made a terrible purchasing decision. No, it's but fine. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It, it. I don't think that my life is going to be revolutionized. We'll see how that goes, folks. <laughs> Hey, Raph. Hey, James. Did you know that you can get an extra episode of Down Round every single week Mm -hmm. on top of the one that you're already getting? Yeah, I knew that. Well, obviously you know, but the person is, I'm using you as a vessel to explain. Sorry, I'm the listener. No, go on, tell me more, James. How much does it cost? A mere $7 a month, Raph. Okay, where do I go to find out more about this? You go to downround.net. Okay, I want it. Well, I'm sure you do. I feel like I'm missing out by not having it. Exactly. No ads. Second episode per week. And a few other little goodies that are coming down the pipeline as well. Head to downround.net. Downround.net. And sign up to Downround Premium.